Next, install the two hose clamps and proper hose mender into the upper radiator hose. Lastly, with the radiator cap off, start and run the engine. Once the coolant is circulating, top off the fluid level with the 50-50 blend of coolant and water, and you're done. Let's quickly review flushing and filling your coolant system. First, always start with a cool engine. Locate the proper heater hose and install the flushing tee. Connect a garden hose to the tee. Insert the deflector tube into the radiator neck. Turn the water on, start the vehicle, and flush the system for approximately 10 minutes. After flushing, add a radiator cleaner and water to the cooling system and run the vehicle. When finished cleaning, drain and flush the cooling system again. Add the proper mixture of antifreeze and water to achieve a 50-50 blend. Check the coolant recovery tank and add as needed. If you are collecting your old coolant, cut the upper hose and install the hose adapter, funnel, and drain sleeve. Place the drain sleeve into the container, fill the funnel with water, and start the engine. Run the engine until the specified amount for your vehicle is removed, add new coolant, and dispose of the old coolant properly. The items you will need to replace a coolant hose include some common hand tools, a drain pan, a knife, replacement clamps, some steel wool or sandpaper, a funnel, a gallon of 50-50 blended antifreeze and water, and the correct replacement hose. We recommend inspecting all coolant hoses every 15,000 miles. Inspect the hoses by feel and visual inspection. First, squeeze the hose several times over its entire length. Signs of a hose prone to failure are spongy or weak spots, a swollen hose from oil contamination, burned areas on the exterior of the hose, or a hose that is hard and brittle. When replacing a coolant hose, always begin with a cool engine. Never work on any part of the cooling system when the engine is hot or has just finished running. With the engine cool, remove the radiator cap and place a drain pan below the radiator drain plug. Open the radiator drain plug, usually located on the tank section of the radiator at the bottom, and drain the coolant into a drain pan. If your vehicle is not equipped with a drain plug, removal of the lower hose may be required to drain the radiator. Once the coolant has been drained, loosen the clamps securing the coolant hose to the radiator and slide them towards the middle of the hose. To ease removal of hoses, we suggest splitting the hose with a knife. This will also protect the fittings from damage. Once the hose is removed, Carefully clean the fittings with steel wool or sandpaper to remove any excess rust or corrosion. Compare the old hose to the new one to ensure proper replacement. Before installing the new hose, slip two new hose clamps onto the hose. We recommend replacing the clamps whenever a new hose is installed. Position the new hose into place, sliding the ends over the fittings. Once the new hose is in place, Slide the new clamps over the fittings and lightly tighten. Check to make sure the new hose clears any obstructions such as the fan or fan belts and finish tightening the hose clamps. Now is a good time to inspect and replace any other hoses while the engine coolant is drained. Once all the hoses have been replaced, close the drain plug and refill the radiator with a 50-50 blend of engine coolant and water. On many of today's vehicles, an air bleed plug may have to be opened to release any air that is trapped in the system. Refer to a service manual for further details regarding your specific vehicle. Once the system is bled and filled with coolant, reinstall the radiator cap. Fill the coolant reservoir to the proper level and start the engine. Check all connections for leaks. After running the vehicle for a while, shut it off and allow the engine to cool down. Recheck the coolant level and add coolant as necessary. Let's quickly review replacing a coolant hose. First, remove the radiator cap with the engine cool. 
Place a drain pan under the radiator drain plug and drain the coolant. Loosen the retaining clamps, remove the coolant hose, and clean the fittings. Compare the old and new hoses. Install the new hose with new clamps. Check for clearance and securely tighten the clamps. Close the radiator drain plug and refill the radiator. Reinstall the radiator cap and fill the coolant reservoir to the proper level. Start the engine and check for leaks. Allow the engine to cool, recheck the coolant level, and top off as needed. The items you will need to inspect and replace a V-belt include a half-inch drive socket set, a belt tension gauge, a ruler or tape measure and straight edge, a flashlight, a pencil and paper, and the correct replacement V-belt. A service manual such as a Hanes will assist in the removal and installation of the belt. The number of V-belts used on a particular vehicle depends on the accessories installed. As each V-belt will drive a particular accessory, such as an alternator or water pump, it is very important to inspect them periodically. We recommend inspecting the belts at least twice a year. We also recommend replacement every two years or 25,000 miles. Before inspecting your V-belts, first make sure the ignition key is off and always begin with a cool engine to prevent burns. Locate the V-belts and using your fingers and a flashlight if necessary, move along the belts checking for cracks, fraying, peeling, glazing, or oil contamination. If oil is present, the cause of the leak must be corrected to ensure proper operation of the new belt. Twist the belts and inspect the other side for similar damage. Next, inspect the pulleys for nicks, cracks, distortion, or corrosion, and replace as needed. When replacing a V-belt, the first step is to note how the belt is routed on the vehicle. A quick hand-drawn picture can save some time and frustration when rerouting the new belts. On vehicles equipped with more than one V-belt, the belt closest to the front has to be removed first. Locate and loosen the adjustment bolt on the component driven by the front belt. The adjustment bolt will usually attach through a slotted bracket. Loosen any attachment bolts and move the component to relieve the tension on the belt. Remove the belt from the vehicle. Repeat this procedure on remaining belts that need to be replaced or need to be removed. If any belts are removed to access a damaged belt, now is a good time to replace all of them. This will save having to repeat the same procedure sooner than you may want to and will help prevent a roadside failure. Compare all of the new belts with the old ones to ensure proper replacement. Be sure to compare for proper length and width. Loosely install all of the new belts, starting with the one located closest to the engine, working your way outward. Make sure each belt is routed in its correct path. Using a piece of wood as a lever or using hand pressure, pull the component outward to put tension on the belt. Tighten the adjustment bolt. Be careful not to over tighten the belt as premature failure of the belt or component may result. We suggest initially tightening the belt until there is no belt slippage when you attempt to turn the belt by hand. If the belt seems to be too small, do not force it on as damage to the belt or the